All right, welcome back to episode two of Learning Math MCAS by Mistake. So we're going to start off with linear relationships, which was one of the big topics from eighth grade math. Um, if you think linear relationships in eighth grade math, you're thinking y equals uh, mx plus b, where m is your slope, and b is your free b, or y-intercept. Uh, remember, your y-intercept here, so if I kind of sketch one really quick here, I'll go here and here, let's say here, and I'll put a dot here, a dot here. So this is your x, this is your y. So if I go here, what would the equation for this line be? Too easy. It would be your free b is at 0, 1. So remember, that's your free b. When x is 0, that's your free y-intercept. So it would be y equals something, something plus 1. So what would the, the slope be? These are going up by 1. It would be rise over 1. A rise over run, which is 1 over 2. So it would be 1 half x plus 1 would be the equation here. So um, let's take a look at the first example in today's uh, MCAS by mistake video. So you can see here, it starts off kind of with one of those topics. Um, so this is kind of a tricky question. Once you write the entire equation, it gives you one point, and then it gives you the free b, the y-intercept. So if you, you have to kind of make a little bit of a jump here. So you know your equation is going to be y equals something, something plus 4. But how the heck am I going to get the slope? I need two points. But that's actually a point. That's a free b. So that's the point 0, comma, 4. Huh. I can get the slope from that. So uh, this is my x, y, x, y. So now I just do the slope formula. Uh, so I'm going to go 0 minus 2, 4, and subtract my y's down here. 4 minus 10, I get negative 2 over negative 6. And that, of course, is positive 1 third. So my equation is 1 third x plus my free b. Too easy, right? Hope you caught my math by mistake there. I did my slope formula completely backwards for you. So you can see here, my y is it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, like that. That is the correct slope formula. So if I fix that, the correct answer should definitely look more like this. So now when I do my slope formula, I have still the two same coordinates using my free b. But now I subtract my y's here. So it's going to be 4 minus 10, 0 minus 2, and I get, um, so 4 minus 10 is going to be um, negative 6, and here 0 minus 2 is going to be negative 2, which is a slope of positive 3. So my equation here would be y equals uh, 3x plus now, if you don't like that way of finding slope, there's the table method. I'll just quickly show you that. So you go 2, 10, let's say, and then you got 0, 4. So your y's go down by 6. Your x's go down by 2. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is still 3. So I thought that was a good one to kind of start off with because it had a lot of interesting um, aspects to it. So next question here. Uh, let's take a look here. Okay, this one has multiple parts here. So um, let's take a look. Um, hold on. I'm sorry. Somehow. Oh, that wasn't where I wanted to start my video, but I did anyway. So I want to start at solving equations. So my bad. We'll go back to linear relationships in a second. Let's go to solving equations now. Sorry. Uh, that's a, a math by mistake, mistake in the video, if that makes sense. All right, let's solve this equation too easy. Add 4 to both sides, add 4 to both sides. x equals 20. Too easy. Not e I can't even make a mistake there. It's too easy. Um, Part B, write a linear equation in one variable that has infinitely many solutions. Okay, um, infinitely many solutions. Infinite means identical. 
So I could write, I don't know, 2x minus 5 equals 2x minus 5. Seems right to me. No mistake there. All right, let's take a look at this one. Uh, this one I'm going to have to go to some scratch paper because when you take MCAS, you'll have some scratch paper. So the first thing I'll do is distribute, and I'm left with 12 plus 3x equals 7x, and then distribute, and distribute here, and I get negative 4x, um, and then plus 6. Okay, so... Eh, sorry, I made a mistake. I can't even go any further. First mistake here was I didn't distribute the or carry the leash to both numbers here. That should be a negative six. Sorry. Okay, continuing on. That was the first mistake. Uh, I can combine like terms on this side here. So I get 12 plus 3x. And over here, 7x minus 4x. That's also 3x. Aha, my spidey senses are going off. I got 3x on both sides here. So then I minus 3x from both sides, and I'm left with 12 equals negative 6. So that's infinite solutions. Not really. It's not infinite solutions. Math by mistake. That is uh, no solutions. When that's a false statement, you say no solution. Cool. Uh, hope you understood that one. Another one uh, going on with the same part here. So that's, this is part D of the question. Uh, looks like this. Oof, I got to show the, I got to show both of these questions because um, just the fractions, the fractions, the fractions, the D, the G method, all that good stuff here. So uh, let's take a look at this example here. So, all right. So first thing I do is distribute this one half. So people distribute this differently. So I got three eighths X minus six equals all right, let's just say I put everything over 1, if you will, like that. This is going to be 4 over 2, because um, I just multiply across, minus, let's just say 1 half times x is 1 half x. Okay, so I could simplify that 4 over 2 and just make it 2, but for the essence of the G method, I'm just going to keep everything here. The least common denominator between 8, 2, and 2 is 8. So I'll put little eights here, right here and right here. And then I go ahead and I do the G method. Remember, the G method is divide and then multiply. So 8 divided by 8 is 1 times 3 is 3x minus 6 equals, okay, same thing, 8 divided by 2 is 4 times 4 is 16. That's cleared. And then G method here, 8 divided by 2 again is 4 minus 1, uh, times 1 is 4x. Did you catch my math by mistake? Because I definitely did it on purpose here. What I forget to do, common mistake, got to multiply this by 8 as well. So 6 times 8 is negative 48. Let's finish this question up here. Always get rid of the smaller, uh, a smaller one there. So now I'm going to add 4x to both sides. I'm left with 7x minus 48 equals 16. Then I'm going to add 48 to both sides. 7x equals 16 plus 48. 64. Divide each side by 7. Okay. And I get... Um, I get x equals 9 and 1 seventh. Okay, I think I did. I'm double, just double checking. I was surprised I got a fraction for an answer, but that will happen when you have so many fractions. Uh, let me see what the answer wants it as. Oh, it didn't even want me to do the whole thing. Silly me. Just has it want to, when you read back the question, it wants to know how many solutions. So it's just one solution. But at least you get to see the G method. Speaking of the G method, let's do the G method one more time with this example here. Aha, more distributing, distributing that fraction here and here. So I get two thirds W. This is over one, like that, plus six thirds equals seven. 
This time I can't, my spidey senses are too strong. I'm just going to make that, if you don't mind, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So I'm going to make this 2 thirds W plus 2 equals 7. All right, now I can use my G method to clear the fraction. Some people might just minus 2, but I'm just going to clear it. I'm going to multiply everything by 3, 3, 3. Spoiler alert, I don't think I'm going to make any errors here. I might, though. Uh, here, G method, that's just going to be 1, 2 W plus 6 equals 21. Yeah, no, no mistakes here. Minus 6, minus 6, 2 W equals 15. Divide side by 2, W equals uh, 7 and 1 half is the answer there. 7 and a half. Yeah, I just double check. I believe I didn't make any mistakes. Two, yep, yep, yep. Uh, 6 over 3, yep, yep. Yeah, that looks good to me. Hopefully it looks good to you as well. Yeah, so 7 half is the answer there. So hopefully that kind of gets you brushed up with um, solving equations with fractions, no solution, infinite solution, all that stuff. Now let's go back to where the video started and talk more about the the uh, linear relationships here. Okay, so, all right. Uh, solution is 20% bleach. So to make bleach, you need uh, number, number solution, you need um, bleach. So, um, okay, so let's think about 20%. 20% is 20 over 100. So that's gotta be like, isn't 20 divided by 105? So I'm looking for a slope of five, too easy. It's not that, it's not that. It's not that, but look here, rise over run, slope of five, it's got to be B. Math by mistake there. Come on, guys. Uh, what's my mistake? Hopefully you noticed it right here. Uh, 20 over 100 is not five, it's one-fifth. So the slope I'm looking for is one-fifth, so it's not that, it's not that. Down here, you can see it goes up one over five, the correct answer is D. All right, next question here. Let's see. Aha. All right. So Josh is saving $50 every two weeks. Um, which of the following graphs shows that? All right. So 50 times two is like 100. It probably starts at 50. Yeah, I would say it starts at 50. And then look, there's the 100. Okay. I, I, maybe it's this one. Or maybe it's not, and that's a mistake because that's telling me it's a, that's a rate and a slope, and that means it's 50 divided by 2, which is 25. And this is proportional because he starts with $0. So I'm looking for something that's proportional with the slope of 25. I bet you I can find it. Uh, it's, let's see, uh, this starts at 0, but the slope's 50. Can see how it goes up 50, 50, 50. So let's see. Aha, that's it. One week, 25 bucks. Two weeks, there's two weeks, 50 bucks. And then every two weeks, he gets 50. So at four, you'll be at 100. The answer is B. Tricky linear relationship question. All right. Okay. I remember putting this one on the quiz this year. Uh, we're looking for greatest rate of change. So rate of change, we're looking for the biggest slope. Mm, slope. Uh, so we're looking for the biggest slope. All right. Uh, okay. So looking at it quickly, maybe I'm just clicking through my answers on MCAST. M here is two, too small. Oh, look at that one. That has a slope. It has a nine in it. Nine divided. That's got to be a really large one. It's got to be C. Or maybe this is pretty large too. Look how steep that is. It's got to be D. I don't think it's that table. So it's, uh, I think it, I think it's D. I think it's D. No, that's a mistake, obviously. Okay, let's actually get the right slopes here. So starting with the first one, M is equal to 2. The next one, the table method, or you can pick two coordinates here. You can see it is going plus 5 every single time. Plus 5, plus 5, plus 5. This is going just 1 every time. One, 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 one. So you think to yourself, haha. Or you could do the, ta the, the slope formula and you do like 7 minus 2, 2 minus 1. If you're using these two points, you get 5 over 1. So the slope's got to be 5. 
and over here it's five over one slope five. That's already beating uh, a rise nine over three, rise over run, slopes three. That's too small. Pretty points here, and then another pretty point here, let's say. Okay, so that's up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight over two. Eight over two is four. That is not bigger than five. The correct answer there was B. The correct answer is B. So you gotta check when you're looking for that, look at all the slopes, the rates of changes. Okie dokie. Uh, let's go on to the next one here. Okay. Cool. This one should be easy. Just write the equation. No problem. Oh, okay. So definitely starts at 40. So I'm going to put a 40 here for the starting point. And then it looks like it's a slope of, oh, there's a, I need, that's an awkward pretty point. Um, that's a nice pretty point. So it goes uh, up 20 over four. So it's like five ish. So we'll just go like negative five here. That's a math by mistake. Come on now. It's a pop, puff, 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 positive slope. So it goes up 20 and over uh, 4. That's a positive 5. So the correct answer here is 5. And then it starts at 40 there. Um, no mistakes here, but i got to show it to you because, oh, this was the same question, but it had multiple choice. My bad. Um, yeah. All right, um, okay, uh, let's go on to, before we move on to systems, I feel like there's a story, another story graph coming up, but maybe that's later in the video. But if these do come up here, just pay attention to the slopes here. So this is increasing from zero to three. So um, I would say D, increasing from zero to three. All the other ones are false. Uh, okay, systems of equations, systems of equations. I think we're, we're going to keep going a little longer, and then we'll probably uh, stop soon for this episode here. All right, systems of equations. As I wrote mess it up, so let's mess it up. Uh, math by mistake here. So this screen substitution here, I'm going to substitute it. Obviously, y equals this, so I'm just going to put it right below it is here. So it'd be 3y equals 2 times 2x minus 4. Okay, that's, that, that is not right at all. Because you get an x and a y here. So that's your math by mistake. So let me do it correctly here. So now I'm going to put this in place here. So I get y, I'm sorry, I get 3. And then 2x minus 4 equals 2x. Now I can solve this. 6x minus 12 equals 2x uh, minus, this is, gets awkward sometimes for people, minus 2x minus 2x. This is not no solution. I get 0 equals 4x minus 12. Then I add the 12 to both sides plus 12. 4x equals 12. x must be 3. So I put my x here as 3. I got a back sub it. I'll put it right here. Two times three is six. Six minus four is two. So my Y has to be two. That was a very fast substitution problem, but hopefully that brings you back um, here. Um, this one I don't know if I want to do, but I could set up the system really quick for you. Uh, Amy paid 60 for one shorts and two t-shirts. And this is elimination, so that equals 60 bucks. And then one shorts and three t-shirts, that equals 75. And you can subtract the equations here. You get negative 1t equals 60, negative 15. So t-shirts equals positive 15. And if I back subbed here, I'll just do it mentally, 1s short, so then you would get 2 times 15, which is 30, and my, minus 30 from both sides, you would get 30 bucks for a pair of shorts. I don't know, I just wanted to throw that in the video. All right, uh, let's go on to, oh, I just got to show you this graphing question, it's too cool. Uh, okay, yeah, this wasn't supposed to, let's see if I can, 
Okay, uh, geez, graphing this one. Should we do it? I guess we're here. What if it comes up on MCAS? Let's do it. All right, so this one's easy to graph. You go starts at 0, 0, and then up 2 over 1 is the slope. Down 2 over 1 is the slope here. Um, so that's 1. I don't know if I how many classes I showed this to, and I know I showed it to some. Here, you got to put it into slope-intercept form. So minus x on both sides, 2y equals negative x plus 15. Divide everything by 2. y equals negative 1 half x plus 7 and a half. Oh, this is coming out to not what I wanted. So then I would start at 7 and a half here, down 1 over 2. Uh, down 1 over 2. I guess that's going to be my solution. Maybe that's what it's looking for. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to throw that in there just so you you saw it. So anyways. Um, all right. More systems questions. I think it's the last systems question. And then I think I'll be the end of this episode here. Oh, man, I gave it all away. This is... Uh, this is, this is kind of not what I wanted to do, uh, but it, let's go with it. All right, so if I'm looking here and it says, which of the graph shows the system equation? So let's say I look through here and I'm like, all right, y equals 2x. Uh, this is my y equals 2x. It's got to be a. Because look, that starts at 15, right? So it's got to be starting way up here. So that's the right one. But that's not. We just graphed it. I got ahead of myself here. The only one that has this, this is it right here. So you can see um, here it is this one. And the reason you know that, say you didn't do the whole like graphing method, you could do substitution just to see it. And put the 2x uh, here. So then you get x plus 2 times 2x equals 15. And that gives you x plus 4x equals 15. That gives you 5x equals 15. That gives you x equals 3. So, aha. Look, that's the only one, x equals 3, that has a number there or some type of intersection. So the answer had to be D. All right, we're going to end this episode here. Got like one or two more episodes left. Uh, we'll start with linear, nonlinear, function, out of function, and the next one.